Good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And you are joining us for our time of reflections. Today is February the 5th. It's Friday, y'all. We made it through another week. And uh, wow, it is going to be an absolutely beautiful day. It looks like the rains have overnight have disappeared and the sky is blue here in Beaver Dam. What a gorgeous day. Uh, the time of reflections is where we get together and we share some time in prayer and uh, we read some scripture and we reflect upon the scripture. And yes, Sarah, the rock is wet, but it is drying off, which is, means it's going to be a great day to get outside and enjoy the day. Uh, highs in the 50s today. Woo, good morning, Mom. So I'm glad that you guys are joining us and keep, keep populating the comment box. It's a great way that we can stay connected. Good morning, Dick and Nancy. Glad you guys are checking in from the lake this morning. So we have been uh, working our way through Psalms and through Acts, and today we're taking a look at Psalm, uh, Psalm number 6 and uh, Acts chapter 24. And this morning um, we're going to use our psalm reading as our prayer, because uh, the psalms can be used for exactly that purpose. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So let's open with our with Psalm 6. Please, Lord, don't punish me when you're angry. Don't discipline me when you're furious. Have mercy on me, Lord, because I am frail. Heal me, Lord, because my bones are shaking in terror. My whole body is completely terrified. But you, Lord, how long will this last? Come back to me, Lord. Deliver me. Save me for the sake of your faithful love. No one is going to praise you when they are dead. Who gives you thanks from the grave? I'm worn out from growing, groaning. Every night I drench my bed with tears. I soak my couch all the way through. My vision fails because of my grief. It's weak because of all my distress. Get away from me, you all you evildoers, because the Lord has heard me crying. The Lord has listened to my request. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and completely terrified. They will be defeated and ashamed instantly well good morning jack and mary helen and then uh, we're working our way through acts so we're uh, at acts 24 and we're focusing this morning on uh, verses 1 through 14. Uh, this little section from the common english bible is, is entitled paul's trial before felix five days later the high priest ananias came down with some elders and a lawyer named Tertullius. They pressed charges against Paul before the governor. After the governor summoned Paul, Tertullius began to make his case against him. He declared, Under your leadership we have experienced substantial peace, and your administration has brought reforms to our nation. Always and everywhere, most honorable Felix, we acknowledge this with deep gratitude. I don't want to take too much of your time, so I, so I ask that you listen with your usual courtesy to our brief statement of facts. We have found this man to be a troublemaker who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the empire. He's a ringleader of the Nazarene fraction and even tried to defile the temple. That's when we arrested him. By examining him, examining him yourself, you will be able to verify the allegations we've brought against him. The Jews reinforced the action against Paul, affirming the truth of these accusations. The governor nodded at Paul, giving him permission to speak. He responded, 
I know that you've been a judge over this nation for many years, so I gladly offer my own defense. You can verify that I went up to worship in Jerusalem no more than 12 days ago. They didn't find me arguing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd, whether in the synagogue or anywhere else in the city. Nor can they prove to you the allegations they now are bringing against me. I do admit this to you, that I am a follower of the way, which they call a fraction. Accordingly, I worship the God of our ancestors and believe everything set out in the law and written in the prophets. So uh, that's our, our scripture today. And good morning, Flo and Karen. So uh, now let's, let's take a little bit of time to prayerfully reflect on the scripture. And as we're in this period of prayer, I invite you uh, to focus on this, this theme that we, saw, that we found in the psalm this morning. Lord, accept my prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, accept my prayer. Lord, accept my prayer. Lord, accept my prayer. Lord, accept my prayer. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to read the notes in our Wesley Study Bible. And the notes for uh, chapter 24 uh, for this particular section reads this way. Um, with the, with the changes in venue, Paul must defend himself before Roman political officials. The charges presented before Felix depict Paul primarily as a political threat. While the flattering introductory comments reflect typical courtroom rhetoric, they exaggerate Felix's accomplishments and contradict his reputation. While the term fraction may refer to a group or school such as the Sadducees or Pharisees, it may also refer to a fringe group. The other negative description of Paul 
makes the latter more plausible. Paul matches Tutorialis's rhetoric, rhetorical uh, skill, but without inflated claims. The center of Paul's defense speech focuses on his confession of faith, which his Jewish accusers could not find objectionable. So uh, those are our notes today. And uh, it is interesting to note that, that Felix, um, the governor during this time, was known for his, uh, his abusive powers and the way he abused his power, especially with the Jewish people at the time. So, you know, this, this chapter really does read like a classic courtroom drama. And this morning, I'm drifted toward the lawyer, Tutorialis. He reminds me of a character from an old TV show that I used to watch in reruns growing up called Leave it to Beaver. Are you familiar with that show? There's a character in that show named Eddie Haskell. Eddie was the best friend of the older brother in the show, and he was known for how he would flatter adults, telling them exactly what they wanted to hear. But in reality, you could tell that the adults saw right through their falsehood, through the falsehoods. This makes me wonder, how often do we fall into believing flattery when we hear it? To me, there's a difference between being given honest praise versus being flattered or buttered up in order to get something. And sometimes it's real hard for us to tell the difference. But you know, I really think the more that we are grounded in our faith, the easier it is for us to tell the difference. Because hopefully we can tell if the praise is coming from a from a place of love or not. Praise to me comes from love, not wanting anything in, re in return, whereas flattery comes from a place of manipulation and wanting something for the comments. So just a couple of ideas to reflect upon. Flattery and real truth, two ideas to reflect upon on this Friday morning. So uh, we'll take the weekend off and we'll come back together on Monday and we'll be uh, looking at Psalm 6 and Acts 25. So I encourage you to, uh, to enjoy the weekend. And good morning, Loretta. Glad to see you're checking in from New Jersey. Uh, hopefully you're, you're dug out from the snow a little bit. So anyway, um, let's close with a word of prayer before we, before we end our time together. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the dawning of a new day. We thank you for the return of the warm sunshine. And we thank you for all of the blessings that you poured out upon us. God, we also praise you and thank you for being here with us in this space and opening the scriptures to us this morning. God, we ask that you continue to open our hearts and mind to your word and open us to how you want us to live, how you want us to build the kingdom. God, you have given us so much, and we are so thankful. And we are truly thankful for the, the greatest gift of all, and that is your son, Jesus. God, we also ask that you be with all of those today who are suffering, whether they're suffering from physical or mental illnesses, or whether they're just... Uh, feeling a little down in the dumps because of, of life is getting in the way. God, just wrap us all in your loving arms and let us feel your presence. Let us know that you're near and let us give a kind word to our neighbor. God, we ask for all of these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Well, friends, go take on the day, take on the weekend and enjoy. Go in peace. Bye for now.